I have in front of me, right here, the brand new, amazing Ableton Push 3. I bet for some of you this is a surprise that Ableton came out with the Push 3. It was definitely a surprise for me when Ableton told me about it. I want to show you guys my favorite features and just things that I love about Push 3 in general. Here's the deal. Just for full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Ableton. Ableton sent me this Push 3 a couple weeks ago. Here's the deal with that. Those of you who have been following my channel know that I am not one to do sponsored videos if it's not a product that I believe in. You guys know that I'm an Ableton user. I love Ableton. I've been rocking with Ableton for a long time now. So I figured that Push 3 would be a perfect piece of gear to review on this channel. And I wanted to bring it to you guys directly and let you guys know the real. Just because they sent this to me does not mean that I'm going to butter up my opinion of it. I'm going to give you guys the real honest truth about Push 3 and what I think about it. Be prepared for honesty and be prepared to dive into this incredible machine. I like it a lot more than I thought I was going to like it. When I first heard that there's a standalone version of Push with Ableton built in, I was like, okay, cool, that'll be dope. But actually, it's been somewhat of a game changer in my workflow. So I'm going to give you guys some of my favorite features and let you guys know my thoughts. Here it is. This is the Push 3. It is a beast. It's incredible. I absolutely love it. If you're familiar with the Push 2, this is pretty similar. Main difference being that the pads are lighter and some of the buttons are configured in a different way. It's slightly heavier. So basically, Ableton has two versions of it. They have Push 3 standalone and Push 3 that's not standalone. So basically, you can use this as both a standalone device to make a track on it from scratch with no computer, or you can use it as a controller to plug in directly to Ableton. I have the standalone standalone version and the standalone version is $19.99 and the regular version that's not standalone is $9.99. One thing that I'm really happy that Ableton did was they allowed you, if you purchase the non-standalone version, down the line, if you decide you want to add standalone functionality, they actually sell a kit because this push is completely modular. So I thought that was really dope. So if you don't have the budget or if you don't know if you need standalone, you can pick up the controller version and then you can add standalone version later. So let's get into some of the features on this. First of all, they have this menu that basically gives you an overview of where you're at. So you can see right here, if I push this button, it toggles in between controlling Ableton and just running push three in standalone mode. So right now I'm in standalone mode. You can see it says 151.1 gigabytes available. So push three has a 256 gigabyte hard drive built into it. Purpose of that is so you can load your samples, you can save your sessions and everything is right on the push. You can also see there's a battery icon. This is plugged in right now. If I unplug it from power, you can see the battery icon comes on. So I have 97% battery right now. And I found that push three lasts about two to two and a half hours in standalone mode without the power plugged in. For my personal workflow, I don't find that I need to run in battery mode because normally I'll be at a desk or something like that and I'll be able to run it with power plugged in. If you wanted to bring it outside, you could make a whole beat on it outside. Or if you wanted to bring it in another room, it has a rechargeable battery. So the battery recharges just by leaving it plugged into power. You can look at your Wi-Fi settings. So these are all my Wi-Fi networks. And if you want to load up a session that you made on push in live, it connects via Wi-Fi. Anything I do on push, if I make a session on here and save it, it's automatically available on my computer, whether you have a desktop or laptop. If you load up Ableton, there's an icon. Let me show you. Right over here, there's a push icon. And then all your sessions and your user library and everything show up right here. Just to show you on push, these are all my live sets that I've made so far since I've had it. If I go to Ableton and you click on the push tab, you can see right here, this is going to have all your projects. So these are all my live sets that I've made on push. And this is my user library. So. Anytime you want to add samples directly to push to save on the internal push hard drive, you literally just drag it here. 
So click on push, you can drag them into the samples folder. So I have some drums that knock, just some regular trap sounds. I've also loaded up some of my personal racks and stuff that I've made. So I can load it when I'm in standalone mode on push. I just love that. If I'm on push in another room, as long as I'm connected to the same Wi-Fi network, it automatically sees it in Ableton. So if I work on a set in another room, it wirelessly will connect everything which is pretty amazing. So let's get into some features on the push. One of the game changing features, you can see that the pads are all white now before there was black in between. The reason is because this is actually one pad, <laughs> which is amazing. And the reason it's amazing is because it has MPE support and you can glide by moving your finger across the pads. Let me show you guys what that looks like in the real world. I'm gonna go to a MIDI track, and this button is to basically load up whatever you want on that track. We are gonna load a simpler. So I go to instruments. Right here, this is a jog wheel. So you can use this now to select your sounds, or you can use this keypad. And so I'm gonna go to a simpler and hit this center button, or you can just click on the jog wheel. The jog wheel also goes forward and back by clicking left and right for certain things. So I'm gonna go to simpler and I'm gonna load a simpler. Boom, now I have a simpler loaded, but there's no sound in it. It says push this button to load a preset or sample. So I'm gonna hit the load button and I'm gonna load up an 808 from Drums That Knock X. I have all my kits loaded up here, but if I go here, I can see all my sounds. So if I hit preview, I'm gonna load this 808. And we'll go here. In scale mode, I'm gonna set it to in key. And this is one of my favorite features on push. What I love about this is MPE support allows you to glide the 808s. How you do that is just put your finger on a pad and glide it. And one thing I wanna say from someone who used push two for a while, push three, the pads are so much more responsive. They actually feel amazing. It's very playable, very smooth. I really love the pads. Really, one of my favorite things about Push 3 is the playability. For 808 glides, this is really a game changer. If you do hip hop, trap, whatever, 808 glide wise, this is incredible. I find that in my workflow, FL Studio was really easy to do 808 glides and you just click in the piano roll and you have the glide function. Now it's actually playable. And I love the ability to be able to play it on Push 3. I think that is probably one of the game changers of Push 3. It's not just 808 glides. The MP PE support allows you more playability with synths, but it is a game changer for 808 glides. So all you basically have to do in Simpler, any instrument you load is going to be MPE enabled by default. The first thing I would do is set your scale. So say I'm in E minor. Once you set your scale, then every note you hit is going to be in key. So if your track is in E minor, you'll be gliding in tune. I personally love that. That was really dope for me. It just adds to the playability of it and it makes it even feel more like an instrument than push two. I just find that with a lot of these workflow things, it just feels like an instrument, especially being untethered from the computer. The playability is just so good. Another thing that I love about Push 3. So I don't know how many of you guys have been following this, but there has been a producer war against production hardware and sound quality. And to some extent, I totally get it because those of you who know me know that I am really into good sound. And I think that the sound coming out of Push 3 is good. It's good enough. It's fine if you're just going to jam and work on music, plug in headphones and jam. It's totally fine for that. But I like a level above. One thing that Ableton did that I'm really happy about is they included ADAP ports. So you might be wondering, okay, well, what's the benefit of ADAP ports? Why does that improve the sound quality? ADAT allows you to go from one optical cable to a high-end converter. Over here, I have an RME ADI24. I have my ADAT plugged into my interface and I'm monitoring through the RME ADI24. So I'm getting the highest quality sound possible. That converter costs even more than this entire push. 
I'm all about getting the highest quality sound. So with ADAT, it allows you to bypass whatever conversions going on here and hear it pristinely through whatever converter you choose. The fact that Ableton did that changed the game. I'm really happy about that. Not even entry level Apollo interfaces have an ADAT output. And this push, which is also an audio interface, by the way, allows you to listen through your favorite converter. So it really has amazing sound. It has as good of sound as your converter. The built-in sound is good enough, but if you wanna take it to another level, you can have your own converter. Another thing I thought was interesting about Push 3 is because it's standalone, it has Ableton built in directly to it. So how do they do that? I was asking them about it. What I found out is that the way that they got Ableton into the standalone unit, allowing you to completely work without a computer is they have an Intel processor built into this and they actually installed Ableton on Linux. So Linux is actually built into this box. And from what I understand, there's gonna be a lot of upgradability. So over time, if the processor becomes phased out or no longer a great processor and there's new processors, new technology, you'll be able to actually open this push and install a new processor into it. What I love is Ableton really made this modular. You can change out the battery, you can change out the CPU, and if you didn't buy the standalone, you can actually get a kit down the line to make it standalone. I thought that was really dope. I'm just looking at the chat right now. Mega said the standalone alone is so unnecessary. Now, this is just my opinion. I agree with you on one hand. I don't think it is absolutely necessary, but the thing is, it is so fun. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you need the standalone version. It's not true. You don't need any of this. But the thing is, when you go the standalone route and you're away from your computer, there is something about being away from a screen and being able to create that is really freeing. Like, for example, I had this in my bedroom and I just left it on and I left sounds loaded up. I didn't turn it off. I'd leave, I'd come back. And something about just seeing it lit up just made me want to just mess around with it. And being standalone, messing around with it, I'm untethered from a computer. I'm just putting sounds down. And all of a sudden, before I know it, I have a beat. I'm just messing around. I find that happy accidents happen more when you're away from the computer. Because when I'm sitting in front of the computer, me personally, I'm in the mood to work. I'm ready to get to work. And sometimes when you have that mindset, it can be a little too serious and a little too restrictive. So one unexpected thing that I really like about the standalone push is you're in a more of a playful state of mind. I'm going in and I'm just gonna tap out some pads and play some stuff. I'm not thinking in terms of, all right, I need to do this, I need to make this, I'm in work mode. I'm thinking in terms of, I'm just playing. And usually when I'm sitting in front of a computer, it doesn't feel that playful. That's just my personal take. Everyone has their own view on it. You know if it's for you, but for me, it was kind of an unexpected joy. Okay, let's get into more stuff. I'm gonna show you how I would load a session. If I click this button, all my sessions show up. So I'm gonna just load this. I don't know what it is. I made some dope shit, some whack shit, So if it's whack, bear with me. So I'm gonna not save the changes. And now the session's loaded up. We're on nine and 10. So this is actually a beat I did on push and OP1. I literally just plugged in the OP1 to the audio input on push and just started playing. It definitely is not mixed. I find that in my workflow, how I'm gonna be using Push 3 is I'm gonna come up with ideas on it and loops. It's not the type of machine for me that I'm gonna make full tracks on. I'm gonna come up with several different loops and then what I'll probably do is bring it into the computer and arrange it. So I don't look at this as like an end all be all where I'm gonna make all my tracks and finish all my tracks. No way, it's not that for me. Some people might do that, but for me personally, it's not that. Where this shines is coming up with ideas and there is something energetic about it. So being able to tap on pads, not really seeing a lot of big screens, just focusing on this one screen, tapping on pads, turning knobs, hitting buttons. To me, there's something energetic about that. You are getting the vibes out onto this machine. And if I have the OP1 hooked up, I have the vibes on the OP1. I'm quickly dialing in a synth and recording. And I'll show you guys the workflow too. There is something about that for me that's so freeing. But I'm not gonna finish everything on it. So these are just some ideas I came up with with the OP1 and push. I had my computer off and I had the OP1 audio cable connected directly into push. So this is what I came up with. <laughs>
what I'm doing is I just came up with four loops on here. If you guys know session view, each line has your loops. So the first line is three loops. That. That. And that. And then the next line, I added this to it. Basically, I have these four loops that I would bring into Ableton and then tweak and mix and change up and all that kind of stuff. That's how my workflow goes. I also find that the button layout for me on Push 3 is more intuitive. I really like what they did with the button layout. And also I'm happy that now we have the capture button. The dope thing about the capture button is as you're playing a melody, if you hit capture, it records in the background what you did and it just shows up. So if you forgot to hit record and you were playing something dope, you hit capture. And really that is one of my favorite features in Ableton in general. How many of you guys have downloaded the new version of Live? It just came out, it's 11.3. The new warping algorithm is crazy. It's gotten a lot better. Have any of you guys tried it yet? I'll show you guys the warping algorithm. And this warping algorithm is on push also. So I'll show it to you guys in Ableton. I'm gonna find a sample. I guess I'll pick this one, I don't know. This is what I like about the new warping algorithm. So you want to find the first downbeat. I guess I'll pick that one. And so you right click it and just click warp from here. And it just intelligently warps it. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to do with this one, but let's check it out. Pretty damn good. Right on beat. I, you hear the metronome? Oh my god, and that. This is a sample of vinyl, so it's not a loop from Splice. <laughs> this is a sample of vinyl. And it did a really good job warping that. You guys heard that? And let's hear the end part. Even the end part is warped. This algorithm is a game changer. I'm super happy about this. Let's take another one. Especially something with drums. Like it tends to do really Scorpio. good. Here, let's try this one. Yup. Amazing, amazing. They just improved the algorithm a lot. Another thing that I really like, actually, let me show you. Let me load up another track. All right. So this is another track I made on push and standalone. If you click this button, you get clip view. So right now I'm on the drum track and you can go through your tracks and see them all in clip view. So this is that flute sample. It's just a little one shot from Drums at Knock. And now if you turn the scroll wheel, you can actually click on whatever note you want. So say I wanted to move this note, I can just click it and turn nudge and you can move the note around. So that's dope. And also say I'm in my drum rack and say I wanna move all my snares off the grid. When you hit the snare, it actually highlights it. And if you hold down select and the snare, and then you let go of select, you can nudge the entire snare track off the grid. Pretty dope. Push standalone works if it's not connected to a computer. But if you hook it up, it's a USB-C cable that hooks up to your computer. Once it's hooked up, you can control live just as a controller. It does everything it does in standalone, but with live on your screen. When it's hooked up, it actually will act as an audio interface. You have two audio inputs and two audio outputs. Say you're in your studio and you want to use Push as an audio interface, you can plug your monitors directly out from Push, play in Ableton, and the sound will go into your speakers through Push. So it works as an audio interface, which is pretty dope.
So another thing, there's a USB-C port that will connect to your computer, but there's also a USB-A port. And the purpose of the USB-A port is if you're in standalone mode, you can actually hook up a MIDI keyboard directly to push and play everything on a keyboard. So if you didn't want to play certain parts on the pad, you can hook it up directly to a MIDI controller in standalone mode, which is really dope. What I love about push, it's so good for standalone and it's great as a controller, the battery power, the ADAT output, all of this just makes it a really dope piece of gear and I'm just really happy Ableton sent it to me. Again, those of you who have been watching me stream know that I don't do sponsored videos, but I felt like Push was such a dope piece of gear that I wanted to accept it from Ableton, really dive into it, learn it, and show you guys it. This is an exception for me and they really impressed me with this. I think it's a really great piece of gear. <laughs> so yesterday I just started using it with the OP1 and I realized that I have not used my OP1 for a while. While. But in using push and OP1, I feel like it's a really good combo. I decided today that I'm actually going to sell this and I'm going to get the OP1 field. This is the OG OP1. So I'm looking forward to going standalone with the OP1 field and push. I think it's going to be a great, great workflow. And I'm stoked about it. So, okay, right now we're going to open it up for questions. Anyone have any questions in the chat? Let's talk push three. Hit me. Hustle production. How do you load your waves in the standalone? Okay, so right now I'm on standalone mode on push three to load a wave say i want to load a simpler with a wave so i would hit plus and it's going to make a new track so i go midi track then i'm going to load simpler so you go to instruments simpler i have my sampler loaded simpler and it says press the load button to load a preset or sample so i'm going to go to drums at knock and we're going to load a break beat So let's load this, boom. And now if I go here, you can see it's loaded up. So that's how you load audio into push. That's crazy. On the bottom of the machine, is the machine hot? It is warm, but not hot. So it actually has a heat sink on the bottom of it and it's warm to the touch, but definitely not hot. Blackbird asked, how do the pads feel? The pads feel incredible. It's a step up from push two. The pads feel really good. They're really sensitive. I'm super happy with it. They feel great. I'm really pleased with how they feel. Also, I don't know if any of you guys dealt with this who are Push 2 owners, but there was like this rubberized material on Push 2 that felt nice when you first bought it. But after a couple years, it would get really sticky. It was disgusting. I hate to talk trash, but it was really bad. And my Push was like sticky and nasty. This, they don't have that anymore. So they learned from the last batch and they didn't put the sticky stuff. So thank you, Ableton. The Visible Man asks, have I played with the MPE much yet? Yes, the MPE is really good for 808 glides and also synths. Let me show you guys another example of what MPE can do. Because I showed you the 808 aspect, but let's make a new set. Check this out. I'm going to load up a new synth. We're going to load up Drift and let's try Pad. So even if you're not doing 808 glides, even like synth glides and all that, it's really cool for that. Vocal samples, gliding vocal samples, all that. It's pretty amazing. Also, you can do vibrato. So hold it. And some synths will do up and down also. It's very expressive, so you hit the pad, it's in tune. Up and down opens and closes the filter on the sound. Left and right is vibrato. And then you can glide. The pads feel incredible. I can't stress it enough. It's very playable. Really, really dope. Can you color code the pads in drum rack? Yes, you can. Let me show you guys how to do that. So I'm gonna load a couple samples real quick. So kick. A little snare. So how you color code the sounds in drum rack is you hold down shift and say, I want that one to be red. 
I want that one to be blue. There you go. You can color code all your sounds like that. Mr. Nobody asks, can the full version of Ableton Live Suite be installed on the Push 3? Yes, if you have a license for Suite, all your Suite devices will be on Push 3. Dark Trap asks, can we record 10 mics with ADAT at the same time? No, but you can record eight. This is something I didn't mention about ADAT. Push 3 has ADAT. What I said earlier, ADAT is amazing because you can bypass the audio conversion built into Ableton and you can add high-end conversion. I have a $2,400 conversion right there so I hear really good sound coming out of this it bypasses the built-in audio engine and gives me RME conversion another thing you can do with ADAT is you can actually plug in a multi-channel converter so you can record eight microphones eight synthesizers directly on push so this has 10 inputs you could record eight channels via ADAT and two more channels with your analog inputs another thing for those musicians out there you can plug a guitar into this on standalone and play guitar directly into push a synth, anything you want. Pretty dope. Lu Bang. No, it doesn't have an XLR mic input, but it has two quarter inch analog inputs and has ADAT, so you could plug in a mic preamp strip or something into it. Hustle Productions. Yes, it has two pedal inputs, which you can use. I personally don't, but you can. Westwick Beats asks, how are the pots? From what I can tell, they feel really good, but only time will tell. You have to see how it wears in. My Push 2, I noticed they got really loose over time, but these feel good. Yeah, some of these feel looser than others, so this one actually feels very loose because I probably use it a lot. Hopefully they stay good. Luckily, my Push 2, the pots didn't stop working. They worked for the seven or so years I had Push 2, so hopefully this is the same. Seems good enough. Also, another thing I didn't mention, there is a MIDI in and out out eighth inch port on push three. So you can use an eighth inch to MIDI converter. And what I did mention is there's a USB A port that allows you to connect a MIDI keyboard directly through USB in standalone mode or regular mode. Pretty dope. Dark Trap Studio. So there's one headphone port, which is stereo, and there's two mono quarter inch line outputs. The headphone is quarter inch and the line outputs are also quarter inch. And you can make them be a stereo pair. B jamming since birth. My understanding is that the chopping is the same on this as push two. So I don't think there's any differences in chopping. One thing I want to say is when it comes to standalone gear, it's not necessarily something that I have historically needed in my workflow, but because this is Ableton, the seamlessness is great. So if I start an idea on push and bring it in Ableton into live, just having that seamless workflow is so good for me. For me, that is definitely a game changer because I'm already so invested in the Ableton ecosystem. It's not necessarily that I prefer to work standalone or whatever, but being that this is Ableton, that's why I like it so much. Birdman, yes, to transfer your sounds, you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network in live and on the push. Interesting fact, if you go into your settings and you click audio, you can set your sample rate and buffer size right here in standalone mode. I find that it, with 128 buffer size, I've had a good number of tracks and it's handled it pretty well. That's been my experience. Matias, does Push 2 still hold a lot of value for producers? I think so. I think if you have a Push 2, it's a great controller for Ableton. I think it's really good. I do prefer the Push 3. MPE for me is a big deal and also the pads feel much better on this, but I think if you have a Push 2 and you're liking it, then stick with that. Push 2 definitely still has value. Okay, that's it for questions. Right now, I am just going to get into making a quick beat. I'm going to be in complete standalone mode. I'm not going to do anything on the computer. I'm just going to make an idea on Push. We'll see what we come up with.
pushes forward for me, just adding ideas, coming up with thoughts and ideas, but not necessarily feeling like you have to finish it, but this is a bop. It's a new idea. And I just saved it and I'll do something with it later. It's called Luminous Antics. <laughs> There we go. This is push three. Thank you so much Ableton for sending me a push. Even though this is sponsored content, push is something I personally believe in and I don't do sponsored content unless it's something that I myself would use and enjoy. I'm just happy to share this with you guys.